Tara Lynn with Five Acres Honey Farm. Welcome back. I have a quick video for you today uh, about a chemical free uh, method for controlling small hive beetles. Uh, if you have been beekeeping for any length of time, you have most likely come across small hive beetle. They can quickly take over a weak colony and it's just good to keep uh, the numbers down as much as possible so that the colony doesn't get stressed out managing it on their own. Uh, one of the ways that I have um, been managing the small hive beetles for a few years now are with beneficial nematodes and these are just the wrappings um, from the past applications that I've done of the nematodes and uh, I'm filming this later in the day I did apply um, one of the strains this morning at sunrise I knew it was going to rain today which is uh, a, a good thing to look for in the forecast if you're about to apply some nematodes um, it's good if the ground is wet, so if, if you do have like a break in the rain, it's good to apply it then. It helps them get into the ground. There are a few different strains that of nematodes that help control the small hive beetle. Um, what these are are microscopic little worms that uh, go in the ground and they will um, consume the uh, larva of the small hive beetle. And they also, these particular strains, also go after other types of pests as well. And so like the two, the two strains, and I'll, I'll show you the wrapping in a moment for the ones that help with the small hive beetle. What I have made a practice of is that I apply one in the fall and one in the spring and I rotate and that way it just kind of helps bolster some um, protection. Um, and I have seen the numbers of small hive beetles go down in all of my colonies over the past few years. It's not like they're gone, but they're way more manageable than they were originally. The other one that I have here does not have anything to do with um, anything that really affects the hive. I'm trying to see which one this is. I'll just, I'll show you the wrappers in a moment. But the other strain that I've applied, um, I've applied it around our, our house and the perimeter around our house to help control um, ticks. Um, our, our dog passed away this year, so it's not as much of a priority, but um, just because I've noticed how um, the population has gone down for, for ticks, since we started applying it, I'm just going to be consistent and do another application. And it also helps control um, fleas, um, termites, um, different ant colonies, so, you know, and, and Japanese beetles too. So you can kind of encourage your neighbors to, uh, to use this as well, if, so that way if you're going to this effort of applying the nematodes and um, your neighbor's not, then they, you know, those pests could always come migrate back over to you but at least you're not contributing to the population. So I will share some of these um, labels with you. Um, these are from Arbico Organics. They are not affiliated um, with me and I'm not affiliated with them. This isn't sponsored. It's just um, the, uh, the supplier I've been using for the past few years for, for these strains. These nematodes are really easy to apply. Um, they come in a little gel pack and I'm just getting them ready here in the high tunnel because um, I've got the water hooked up and the hives are really close by right there. So you add a little bit of water to the um, package and then just kind of shake it up for 10 seconds before putting it in the bucket. So I use a little paint strainer bag, which is the same one I use for worm tea. And once I get that in there, I add some more water and strain it out before adding it. I poured it into the uh, watering can and uh, the nice thing with the strainer is that it removes all the gel so it doesn't clog anything up. And I, you're supposed to use a five gallon bucket, but I just use, I think this is a two or three gallon pail. It's easier for me to carry around and uh, I know that I can't carry five gallons of water. This is seriously how simple it is. You just water the ground around the hives. It's best to do this right before and or after it rains. Um, it helps the nematodes get into the ground. So after I spread them out, I'm going to refill the bucket and do one more round of watering um, because it is supposed to rain today, so that'll be great for them. A good thing to do is to shake the pail or stir it um, fairly frequently because the nematodes can settle at the bottom. So I've been doing that um, in between the watering. I inverted the strainer bag and got the gel back in the original package, which now I can discard and reuse the strainer.
these are the nematodes that I applied this morning uh, and uh, you can see that it also controls some weevils and grubs and uh, and it can cover a lot of property so I obviously didn't go um, that <laughs> that much space so I'm hoping um, you know that more concentrated application may help um, but in general you'd want to do it in like a radius of about six to eight feet around your hives I didn't go that far today um, but you know I, I rotate again you know from spring and fall this is the one that I applied in the spring and um, you can see it also um, you know goes after some some other pests and um, if you go to Arbico's website which I will link it actually, both of these strains actually um, respond to a lot more than what's listed here. So, um, you know, they, they provide really great instructions on the application methods and everything. It's super helpful. Um, the other uh, strain that I'll do a separate video on that I mentioned, like this helps control um, tick and flea populations and um, it's not listed here, but also Japanese beetles. Um, that's this particular strain and it comes in a, um, a powder form. So the nice thing about the powder form is that you can put it in the fridge and, you know, use it when you can, you know, fairly soon. With these other varieties that come in the gel, these you cannot put in the refrigerator. They come with a freezer pack and when it arrives, it's typically warm. So you should have a freezer pack ready to put back in the insulated package that they come in and just keep it cool and you want to use it as soon as possible but again like the best thing to do is like to use it right before it rains um so that really helps get them into the ground so the weather may not cooperate so like these arrived on friday and it was so dry all weekend like i had plenty of time to put them out but i waited till today which is monday um to apply them because the forecast looked more favorable so it may have compromised the integrity of um, the, the, um, the nematodes that were sent, um, and maybe some, a lot of them may not have survived, but I feel like the ones that did survive had a better chance, um, than otherwise. And hopefully that helps. So thanks for watching. I'll do a separate video on the other nematodes that I mentioned, uh, cause that one comes in a powder form and I use a hose end sprayer for it instead of, um, that gel process that I just walked you through. And if you have other uh, ways that you manage your small hive beetles, I would love to hear them. I've had fairly poor success with um, the little um, like lint trap uh, material and the small hive beetle traps. I have another video about um, my little hack with them, which I will link here. Um, but in, in those require a lot more maintenance and I'd rather just get the populations down than having to be reactive in that sense. So thanks.